everyone. Welcome to Historically Speaking, an online YouTube history channel focused on the history of various institutions and professionals and how history intersects with education and culture in the world around us. I'm Karen Yang, the host of Historically Speaking. Um, today here we have Aaron Dorkin, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Summer Learning Association, or the NSLA, to discuss learning and education in the summer months and what that has looked like in the past and maybe in the future. Um, Aaron oversees NSLA's support to their network of 15,000 program partners and leaders in all sorts of different areas, including policy, public awareness, etc. Um, previously, he founded and directed Hoops and Leaders, an award-winning grassroots youth mentoring and leadership program for low-income boys in the New York City. He has also served as president of the After School All-Stars National Network, a nonprofit serving thousands of students in cities all around America. Um, Aaron, thank you so much for your support for student education in summer months and for being with us today. Um, is there anything you'd like to add regarding who you are and what you do? No, uh, just that I'm, I'm very pleased to be here with you and proud of you for showing an ish, you know, initiative and interest in all this topic. And, um, and listen, I, I work in education. So if anybody like you or anyone you, you're working with is interested in education, it's always my job and my, and the, my peers' job to, to be available and help. Awesome. Um, so we'll just like dive into a couple of questions and just see where it goes from there. Um, so one thing that I really think is interesting is that um, I was never really aware of the National Summer Learning Association and um, just like how students really use their summers, even just as a student. Um, so how have students really used their summers like historically and has this kind of method been effective? And if not, what do you suggest students do in the summer to like keep up with their learning? Sure, sure. So there's a lot of questions there. So a couple, let's let go back a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So America, if you really are interested in like kind of like the American public school system and education, mm -hmm. you know, they always say our education system evolved over time uh, in response to an agrarian society, a rural farming society, right? And so like mm -hmm. in the summer, student we we had summer off because students were expected to go help out on their farms mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. now even if you don't even if you live in a big city or a suburb but you don't have a farm we mm -hmm. still have that calendar yes right so that's mm -hmm. our calendar so we typically you know september to june public school 180 days and what happened is so we you could debate education and then education is very much a local issue so everybody gets to decide at the local the most local level who you know, what the students learn, every state has their own tests and their own curriculum, and every school board and district and everyone's deciding. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then the summer months are, you know, so even though whoever you are in America, you're entitled to a, a free public education at, at their, you know, at minimum and, and mm -hmm. hopefully students take advantage. Then the summer months come mm -hmm. and it's like the crazy drop off. And those families in America, we're talking about American education, you know, who have resources, who have the money and have the desire, will pay without blinking or thinking thousands of dollars for their mm -hmm. children to go do amazing activities, you know, go here, go study abroad, go work at a college, volunteer, do an internship, go to a summer camp, a million, you know, outward bound, you name it. Mm -hmm. And then there are millions of low income kids and families who cannot afford to do any of these things. Mm -hmm. And then what happens in, in September, they all show up and the kids who kept learning and doing cool things have kept learning and they're motivated and they hit the ground running in September. And for others, they're three months behind. And the research in my mm -hmm. organization started 30 years ago with mm -hmm. some uh, seminal research from a guy named Carl Alexander that showed they call this like the summer slide and summer learning loss and that some mm -hmm. kids gain and some kids lose and that all the summers add up. And so oh, wow. after a few years, one kid could be a few years behind a, a higher income student peer in his class because he didn't get to do anything in the in mm -hmm. summer months. So mm -hmm. that's all been true. And we've been getting some people to focus on that for decades. What happened is COVID now hit mm -hmm. and everyone has kind of been awakened to whatever happened in the summer months. They're like, this was affecting everyone, no matter mm -hmm, how much sure. money you had, you were home mm -hmm. and your kids were struggling and they didn't have access to a computer and you were working and your parents were working and they couldn't help you. And you had to do, 
And there's been this kind of understanding and empathetic appreciation of like, whoa, my God, is this what happens Mm -hmm. for everyone? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, people have viewed summer as a chance now to help kids catch up from what they missed by being out of school for two years. Mm -hmm. And there's billions of dollars right now in the federal government, American Rescue Plan, just for summer programs to help kids catch up. Mm -hmm. So it's both a, uh, it's both the most unequal time in education, but Mm -hmm. it's also the most entrepreneurial time in education. And so if you're somebody who's creative, who cares about helping kids and, and creative solutions the summer months are a place where you want to work. Mm-hmm. That's really true. I never really knew of that like cumulative effect of like missing these summer months because definitely every single year we go back to school and typically I think even most strongly for me in the math class, we're just like, oh, let's try to like bring back what we learned the, oh, like in June. And I was never really aware that like this kind of effect builds up and continues that beyond just like one school year. So that's definitely like really eye awakening. And for sure, like the COVID-19 question, I think it's definitely put us more on an equal footing because as you said, we're all at home on our computers, like pretty much our education has kind of stayed relatively equal, even though the home environment can definitely affect the student a lot. Um, So that's all really, really interesting. Something that I was genuinely never really aware about. Um, So, What kind of like summer programs do these like low income students or um, what kind of summer programs, what do they kind of look like essentially? Sure. And I think that so so two things. One, my organization uh, works with almost 15,000 different partner groups who Mm -hmm. are providing no to low cost summer programs. So we're talking everybody from, I like to say schools. So schools, and we'll talk about this in a second you know, the difference between summer school and summer learning, but a lot of schools are running summer school programs, right? Mm -hmm. But then you have what I call um, uh, youth serving government agencies. So these are your local parks and rec center, you know, programs that are run by taxpayer dollars, government agencies, your libraries, Mm -hmm. public housing authorities. If there's low income housing, they have staff who are running summer programs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you get to be a high school student there in most cities, there's the whole summer youth employment, summer jobs programs. That's run mm-hmm. by, say. okay, so you have government parts. So all, anyone who's running any of those programs comes to my conference, comes to my webinars, we work with them. And then there's all the nonprofit organizations in the world, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, summer camps, da, da, da. And I'd say, so the holy grail, in my opinion of summer learning is, so you, you typically, when you're a little kid, you, you go to programs near where you live. So you go mm-hmm. to your school, you go to the library, some thing you could get to. When you get to be about middle school age, you could go a little further away. You could go to an overnight camp. You could go to a program on a college campus. Might even get to go to another country. And then when you get to high school, we're talking about summer jobs. And there's a difference between a summer job and a summer internship. And the most unfair form of summer learning is the unpaid summer internship. Oh, yeah. And if you think about that talk about equity. People talk about what's equity be? What's what's mm-hmm. fairness? What's equal? Mm-hmm. If you if you have a family that could support you to go work for free for a congressman, you could go do that, have a great experience, build up your resume, learn a lot, and probably even get a real job offer. Mm-hmm. But if you are someone who can't afford, I'm just using the example of coming to Washington, DC. Almost every person who works for their senator or congressperson has to intern for them first. Mm-hmm. But even if they pay you minimum wage, $10 an hour, for, you know, who could afford to fly to Washington, buy clothes, get an apartment that only certain types of kids could do that. And yeah, as a result, sure. all the staff people on Capitol Hill helping support our government, federal government, are higher income folks, and they're leaving out a big part of America. So mm-hmm. that's just one example. Now, I'll just to say something else between the difference between summer school and summer learning. So the reason mm-hmm. we even use the phrase summer learning is to kind of broaden people's minds to what's possible mm-hmm. i'll ask you karen did you ever go to a summer camp as a kid did yeah you ever... for sure for sure what kind of what kind of camps did you go to um i did a lot of like art kind of things i think there was like the princeton board of art or something that i went to pretty frequently right there's sports camps there's this there's that i was a counselor i was a dishwasher all these things that and i'm on the national board of the american camp association three thousand summer camp uh that historically has not reached, again, low income. There are about 25 million kids in America uh, before COVID who qualify for the free and reduced lunch program. Mm-hmm. That's 
the proxy for poverty we use. So we don't say, are you in poverty? We say, do you need a free lunch? And if the answer is yes, that's what we count. And there are schools that have more than 50% of the kids in the whole school need free lunch. So then they mm-hmm. call that a Title I school and all this. So I and my organization and the partners we have, we are focused on these 25 million kids because the rest of the kids in America are going to have great experiences. So I'm just really focused on this on this subset of students who no fault of their own mm-hmm. can't afford to do great things. And I want to make sure they have good things. But what always typically has happened, if you want to talk about history, was that the only people who got to go to summer school were people who got in trouble or people who really struggled. And it was a punishment. Mm-hmm. And think about your reputation in your mind. When you hear summer school, what do you think? You think it's mandatory. Mm-hmm. It's if you get all D's and F's. If you know you get yourself in trouble, you have to go. It's a, you know, no one wants to be there. It's only academic. It's in the same school building. And it, you feel horrible about yourself. Mm-hmm. Summer learning was designed to say, whoa, 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 let's shift this mindset. It doesn't have to be only for kids who struggle. Yeah, if you struggle, we'll, we'll help you. But what about a kid like Karen who does well? We want to make sure that she can take an art class. Why we can't offer during the school year? Or we want to learn entrepreneurship or study mm-hmm. this and that. And by mm-hmm. the way, you can make it so fun that it's voluntary and people want to come and mm-hmm. sign up. And it could just be the opposite of everything I described summer school with. So it's like, and it doesn't even have to happen in the school building. You can go have a get course credit for high school by studying at the science museum or being at the college or being, right? You can kind of like do anything and and, and make it what everyone want, wishes education was anyway. It's mm-hmm. like hands-on, fun, interactive, project-based, team-based, all the things we wish we want everyone to have so mm-hmm. so that's the idea and and we are seeing examples of this so in boston they do something mm-hmm. uh, a whole citywide project where it's the school district working with 250 organizations mm-hmm. in the community and they make the cities their classroom in the summer and kids mm-hmm. are taking classes at the aquarium and the science museum the teachers are going so here's what here's the difference it's like if summer school and summer camp had a baby mm-hmm. you'd end up with summer learning because mm-hmm. if you had all the fun and all the you know interact you know hands-on project stuff that you get at a summer camp, but some mm-hmm. of the academics and the math, and because we still need kids to you know to learn math and they can learn yeah. in a fun way. Yeah, you, you could teach them how to start a business. Mm-hmm. You could teach them how, you know, or you could teach coding. You could do all the and create apps. You could do a lot of fun way fun ways. But that's what summer should be, um, mm-hmm. and that's that's what my group's focused on. Mm -hmm. yeah I think like have you ever heard of the term like informal learning or like unconventional yeah for sure and I think like um the term that you were talking about like the summer learning just like learning kind of beyond just the classroom but more into like museums and like aquariums and like these like real um I want to say like real life but because everything yeah real world real world learning yeah for sure like experiences is definitely like really interesting and like um I guess that's like how most I... people learn. That's how most people learn. Exactly. You know, that, exactly. That's why that's why the internship is so important. And, mm-hmm. and you know, the, I did this this summer. The National Basketball Association, the NBA, is mm-hmm. funding with me, with my group, 10 college students, first generation college students, diverse college students. We're mm-hmm. going to get the chance to do these paid internships in Washington, D.C., like I was wow. describing. And and they see it. And I, I did it last year with four students. And I'll tell you, by the way, at the end of the 10 weeks, one of the students got a full-time job. That's Boom. awesome. And now she's working on Capitol Hill for a congressman. So it's like, these things are like, the other thing about summer specifically that I think makes it high ROI, which is means high return on investment, is that it's by definition, it's a life transition point. Mm-hmm. So if you think about it, the summer between you, elementary school and middle school, or the summer mm-hmm. between middle school and high school, mm-hmm. or even the summer between high school and college. Yes. You know, a kid is so vulnerable, but they're open and they're excited and they're nervous. And like whatever you tell them in that summer before they start their next level of school, they're going to pay attention. Yeah. And so it's like if you're going to like work with a kid and help them really decide who they want to be and what's possible. Mm-hmm. If you invest in them in those summer, in those specific summer transition points, mm-hmm. it can have a gigantic lasting impact. Yeah, for sure. And, and I can give you a couple of quick examples. I'll just share with you a good, a good example and a bad example. So on a good example, there are a lot of programs mm-hmm. and we work with them uh, to get more diverse 
uh, people of different backgrounds to want to be doctors. Oh, nice. And it turns out that every hospital, I'm kind of joking, but almost a lot, almost every hospital and every medical school is running a program over the summer for high school kids, diverse high school kids, to teach them how to be doctors. Mm -hmm. I can name so many programs, you know, from NIH is running a program for high school kids, the Food and Drug Administration, Johns Hopkins University, St. John's University, you name it, all these groups, always similar, starting from scratch. A doctor who says, looks around, says there aren't enough people who look like me or my patient, and we need to make sure that we get the kids into medical school. It's a long haul. So we need to get kids in high school who know they want to be pre-med in college, who then want to apply to medical school. You know, it's a long, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a long game here. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a program in, in Baltimore that my organization gave an award to called Merit Health Scholars, where for three summers in a row, the first summer, you shadow doctors. Yeah. You pick all these high school kids. They, they go into surgery and they watch doctors every day. That's and okay. the second summer, they're in a research lab and they're mm-hmm. researching diseases. And then they talk to the doctor. And the third year, they go work in a health clinic. And they're like mm-hmm. helping people get health care. Mm-hmm. And then they help get help applying to college with their SATs. And, and it's an amazing program. And, mm-hmm. and I learned that there are lots of programs. like this. So that's like talking about hands-on and project-based, mm-hmm. right? That's STEM, mm-hmm. that science. It's, it's like real people. And it's like teaching you about real careers. Here, here, here's a, an example of where it could be bad mm-hmm. or it needs to be helped. There's, there is research and there's even a term called the summer melt. And that is, uh, refers to students who people help them. They're good kids. They're good, they're good students. And they get help and they graduate high school mm-hmm. and they get help and they apply to college and they get into college. Mm-hmm. And then between the months of when they finish high school and their high school guidance counselor helps them and, and freshman orientation at college and the mm-hmm. college is waiting for them, not a single adult calls them for three months. And tells them, hey, are you going to go to college? Are you getting ready? Are you renting a van? Are you packing up? Do you know when to go? And thousands of kids who get into college do not show up oh, wow. in the fall. Because no adult, their mm-hmm. parents are working. Their parents maybe they didn't go to college. They don't, they get a, they have a girlfriend, they have a boyfriend. Then someone says, why are, you, why are you going to college? Stay home and work. And they don't come. And mm-hmm. they literally don't show up. And the college is waiting for them. And the high school thinks they're done and the college is waiting on the other side. And because nobody talks to them in that three month summer period, mm-hmm. boom, all these kids that everyone's invested in fall off. Mm-hmm. And that's my point is like, that's like fumbling on the one yard line, they call mm-hmm. that, you know, in football. And so what can you do? And now a lot of groups are focused. Oh my God, we can't just stop. We have to talk to them in July and August because otherwise it's not, you know, and it's this summer intervention. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the last thing I'll just say here is that there's a sports analogy that the coaches say, like, you know, nobody, if you play sports, especially basketball, if you, if you, uh, uh, if you're playing basketball, like my coach used to say, like, nobody gets better once the season starts, you're mm-hmm. pretty much as good as you're going to be. And like, you hopefully you play well, or, you know, but if you want to like make varsity next year and you want to be able to learn to dunk, or you want to become a great three pointer, the difference is how much work you put in over the summer. Yeah, for so I just sure. hold on to that. All right. So I just told you a lot of stuff, but I'll, I'll stop there. No, yeah, I totally like I never heard of this, like, um, this like summertime melt thing. I've definitely heard of the summer, uh, just like slump. But that definitely just like goes to show how necessary these programs are just like, to ensure that we just don't let any like vulnerable population just kind of like fall behind or just like, fail to really like show up on the things that they should show up on Mm -hmm. um i'm gonna be really respectful of your time and kind of just like end our interview here um are there any like last remarks or closing remarks that you want to add or no i look i i think if anyone's listening to you i hope they take some inspiration in your initiative because anything ever everybody until you're 30 years old people want to help you and take time to answer your question after you're 30 then they'll start charging you money for their time but I learned that when I was your age and, and just, just ask questions and there's no bad questions. And in terms of if you've been given a lot of opportunity, mm-hmm. if you're somebody who can recognize and appreciate that you've been given a lot of opportunity, mm-hmm. then you have two ways to go. What do you do with it? You, you can help yourself or you can put yourself in a position to help others. And mm-hmm. that's what I chose to do and, and create opportunity for others. So mm-hmm. if you think about all the things you've been given, and all the chances and all these options and all opportunities you have, then just know that you're lucky and think about, all right, can I create something? Because everything you're able to do um, 
you know, you have the power now to help others uh, have something similar. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much.